Hey everybody, it's Timo here. Pretty much in today's video, we're gonna make a little new player guide for new players who probably found this game on Steam that just recently got officially released there. This game is a free to play, and as a free to player, you're gonna have a number of options to choose from on stuff that you get to do. But there's one thing that's going to remain whether or not you're free to play or pay to win player is actually very simple you start out your launcher you get into the game the first thing you're gonna see is an option to create a character and that's basically what we're gonna do so pretty much you have a number of options on what you want to choose from you get to play fighter bar broke ranger wizard cleric bard warlock druid so pretty much before we hop into the final choice of what class you want to play there's one thing that i want to mention each and every class has different up and downs some of them are strong some of them are weak it's basically at the end of the day it's up to you to decide what you want to play on but if you're just starting out um there's two classes that I will recommend you to play. It's either a fighter or barbarian. Those are the two classes that are actually quite new player friendly. And these are the classes that are extremely straightforward. And basically you will be able to get better at them pretty quick. The barbarian though, on the other hand, has one very cool feature. And that is the crush perk. The crush perk will allow you to break stuff very quick which will allow you to progress a lot faster and basically start to dominating you know gear wise getting upgrades pretty quick so basically this is the class that i would highly recommend you to start out with it's actually quite convenient uh, to use and you would get to see how good this class is once you figure some stuff out so pretty much this is exactly what we're gonna do let's make some random name here we go new level bar so pretty much when you start the game, when you created your character, this is what you're going to see. You're going to have a little guy right in the middle. You're going to be level one. That here's going to be your name. The very next thing is basically you get to choose the game you want to play. When you start out, you got nothing, absolutely nothing. So the next thing that you get to see is the merchants. Each and every merchant have different sellables as well as, um, I mean, different stuff they sell as well as variety of tasks and pretty much I highly encourage you to take every single task from the get-go because uh, basically uh, sooner or later you will come across specific locations sooner or later you'd have to kill specific mob and even without realizing you will start progressing down the line without even giving two Fs about tasks but still I highly encourage you to check what they actually ask from you so that you would have a specific target and goal in mind when you go into the dungeon. So pretty much once you're done with this, you can actually go and see what they sell. But don't get me wrong, when your level one, you, when your trader is level zero, basically the here is we got a little problem. He ain't selling much, even if you have gold. The stuff that the the trader sells at the first level is very limited and basically have little to no value so just don't bother spending gold on stuff unless it's bandages or potions which you should invest your gold in as soon as possible so pretty much once you're done with that basically go and check out the class here where you're gonna see training with the little letter that says new training system in development yeah for this we're gonna we're gonna see this in action in likely couple of months but as for now, we can go to perks and skill and basically you'd get to see what are your perks and what are your skills are. So pretty much when you start out on a new character, you're going to be level one. And when you're in level one, you only got one perk available, which is the starting perk, which is two hander. So instead of using the two hander, I highly encourage you to take it off and use one perk in particular, which is crush. The crush will help you break doors boxes chests pretty much everything on your way and each and every time you break something you're likely gonna get some cheese as a reward you gotta equip that cheese and you're gonna get stronger progressively start with using green items move on to blue items and eventually you're gonna achieve um some success after you decided to pick which perk you want to play with well you got two more skills to choose from 
Usually you start with the rage and the reckless attack, but I will highly encourage you to never use this perk in particular, I mean skill, because it's absolute dog shit. It does nothing. Basically there is one that is far more superior and that is Savage Roar. Once you have it on, you will feel the power. Basically what it does, it frightens all enemies within 7.5 meters for 6 seconds. And also it reduces physical damage bonus of players within the same radius um, if, uh, if you encounter them, you know what I mean? So on the other hand, if that's the mobs, they're gonna be running away in fear. It's especially useful um, if you need to open a portal or you feel like you're stuck or you feel like there's too many mobs around. So pretty much, as a barbarian, there is a number of perks that you have. And if you get to ask me what would be the ideal combination of perks, well, there is no really ideal combination of perks, but there is specific builds that will help you in specific scenarios. One of the builds that I currently use is depends on whether or not I'm gonna use an axe. If I'm gonna use an axe, I'm gonna use combination of axe specialization, robust, and also I'm gonna use either iron will or potion chugger, and I'm gonna use crush as well. Crush is very convenient to break doors. When you're very geared, you probably don't need this because you will be able to open stuff faster because your regular interaction speed is going to be faster. But if you're slow, if your regular interaction speed is slow, that means you will not be able to open stuff faster. I mean, fast at all. So for this case, yes, you will need Crush. Crush is going to help you out a lot. In today's video, we're gonna play on a barb with the Crush. We're gonna use the combination of Rage and Savage Roar. The Rage is a very useful skill, it's gonna increase your move speed by 12%, it's gonna give you a little bit of strength and a little bit of vigor. And also, you got a 20% physical damage reduction for 6 seconds. Basically, this is what you're gonna get, that's what you're gonna have. And as well as um, Savage Roar, which I already mentioned before. But there's one thing that I wanna mention, instead of Rage, you could choose Achilles Strike, and Achilles Strike will strike a target and reduce their movement speed by 30%. So basically this is how it works. Uh, there you could choose either Rage or Achilles, and especially it's very useful for PvP. Achilles could slow uh, your opponent down if you get to land that one hit, and if you get to land that one hit, you pretty much will be able to land the second hit as well just because the way it works. But if you have the rage, well, you will be able to land that first initial hit. But if the person is still trying to get away from you, it's very, it's going to be very hard to connect your hits. So it's suboptimal. If you're going for a full PvP, I will highly encourage you with Achilles Strike. But when you're starting out, I still will encourage you rage because it's going to help you get away from shit that is quite unexpected. And basically, in today's video, this is exactly what you're going to go with. Before you go into the video, I highly encourage you go to the merchant. Once you get to the merchant, there is a squire guy. The squire guy offers you free gear. And basically, this free gear is an absolute life save. Before you get into the game, you should 1. Equip armor. 2. Get a quarter stuff just in case, maybe you'd like it more. 3. Use adventure boots instead because they're going to give you dexterity and dexterity is something that barbarian needs a lot. Dexterity increase your attack speed and your attack speed is extremely important. So once everything's set, you gotta equip it all. Yup, we're done here. So basically, this is what our bad boy looks like with the drum in the back, with the extra Francesca axes and with actually quite a chunky amount of bandages with the potion of healing. We're level 1, we have 20 strengths, we are quite slow, but we have a rage and we have savage roar. With the crush we will be able to break everything on our way and basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop in the game directly. We're gonna go into the goblin caves. There is currently goblin caves are in duo and if you want to replicate um, the experience of a solo player to the best, we probably gotta wait around for a bit until we get a solo goblin caves. Currently the matchmaking, the matches are rotating. And when they do rotate, you get to play the same map with the different comp. So the match got the matching pool got rotated again, and now the goblin caves are in trios. 
So pretty much we're gonna wait another 2 minutes to be able to play Goblin Caves as a solo. And basically, if you're starting out, I highly encourage you to learn Goblin Caves as its most un most forgiving, most, I would say, pleasant experience there is you can find in the game compared to the Frost Mountains, which have mobs that will not only slow you down, but also fuck you in the butt. And that's probably not the most pleasant experience um, you may find. The ruins, on the other hand, have a lot of skeletons that will not just fuck you in the butt, but also will... I don't want to talk about it, but what they're gonna do is basically another topic for another video. As for now, we're gonna wait for another couple of minutes. Anyway, let's do it and let's wait it out. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, so pretty much finally we got the goblins. The goblin caves are ready, our perk is ready, our skills are ready. We have a pretty decent setup that we got on the level 1 from the squire. Free to play experience with the free to play stuff with the just free bunch of free shit that you got from squire. Anyway, let's hop into the um, goblins and let's try and find some luck. Pretty much what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and help you to survive your first game. Surviving your first game is extremely important. Ideally you get to level 5 in your first game but um... That's not something that you could do if you don't have much experience and basically we're gonna try and get your first experience as smooth as possible. I'm gonna tell you exactly what to do no matter where you spawn and uh, also I will tell you exactly where to look at in order to survive. Um, when you're starting the game out there is few things you need to look at. One is where the freak you are at, two where the freak you should go and three how the fuck do I get out. Well, this basically you gotta follow these three tabs, steps. Once you figure out where you're at, you gotta clear out the room. Once you're done with that, you gotta figure out what is your next step gonna be. And then once you already have some cheese with you, just go to the static. We spawn in a top right corner. This part of the map is absolute butt chicks. I hate it. So pretty much what we have, we have a crush. With the crush you will be able to break stuff. Unfortunately, this chest is reinforced one, and this is a fucking mimic. Holy cow, bro. But anyway, it's been a while since the last time I found the mimic, I'm gonna be honest. First thing what we're gonna do is we're gonna take what the guy has to offer. No matter what he drops, we take it. We take everything, because whether or not you're gonna be able to use it, um, you still will be able to sell it. When you come across the boxes, you should break them. Especially if you find better quality stuff, you should pick them up. The better quality stuff will be sold for better. And basically the money you will acquire will help you out in the future. On Francesca axes, which are very convenient. I'm gonna use them instead because they're gonna help me out. I'm gonna throw the drum away because it doesn't eject shit. We found another thing. Alright, next box. Done. We found a straw hat. Nice, we already have a bunch of uh, green items. Our first target is going to be the goblin. He died in two hits because we are fucking OP. Now here we go, we gotta upgrade. Three Wigger and we're already at 140 health. We're doing pretty good. Let's break the box, see what we find. There wasn't much this time and we got a potion of uh, invisibility. Potion of invisibility is what you need for the alchemist. Basically this is one of the potions that you need to find. You need to find three potions. Um, blue, red and... and uh, white and basically these options will help you to finish the alchemist task when you come across here well there is a chest that you could loot if you'd like to but yeah. it's up to you whether or not you want to go down there um so what i will recommend is to look where the here we go we have a lever here so what i will recommend is open the gate up and see whether or not you have a ladder here since we do have a ladder here, well, nothing stopping you. No, absolutely nothing stopping you from getting here. Um, so here we have a bunch of mobs. We're gonna wait them out until they come, and we're gonna give them a little loft up. These are the skeletons. They fucking suck. Nobody likes skeletons. They do a lot of damage, and they're quite annoying to deal with. We got a bone. We got a plate boat. Usually, what I, how I would recommend you to deal with mobs like that is just by simply walking away, waiting for them to finish their attack, and then once they finish their attack, I highly encourage you to recommit and give that one little slap that will finish them off. 
We got a straw hat, we got a wonder attire and range hood. Since we already have two white items that we absolutely don't need, we're gonna take the ones that actually cost something. That's exactly what we're gonna do. Our inventory is already a big fucking mess and I already and I do wanna save up. I mean and I do wanna take as much stuff as possible and that's exactly what I'm gonna aim. To take as much stuff as possible. <laughs> But here, let's go back to the main reason why we even end up in this place, and that's because of this hat chest. This is the, um, unfortunately, we can't open it up because it requires a peak clock and we don't have it. But on the bright side, we still have another chest, which we're gonna absolutely obliterate. This is what we have here. We have a little helmet that will increase our strength and vigor and max health. How about we go and use this instead, because I think it looks cool. Since we don't need the ranger hood, we're gonna keep the um, potential piece that we will be able to equip in the future. So we're gonna take it instead so that um, we will be able to um, have it. Since we have a bunch of stuff that we could actually open up, it's up to you whether or not you wanna spend a little bit of time, but since we're here anyway, we might as well do this. We have a lot more stuff to go, and basically we encountered our the first piece of shit. <laughs> and that's the skeleton with the freaking axe. I hate it. I still get hit by it. Even though I have 2000 hours of experience. Um, it doesn't change the fact that I absolutely get shit on by mobs from time to time. Sometimes it's not even your skill. It's the fucking game. <laughs> they just want to make you suffer. So if you get hit, don't stress it out. It's okay. By the way, here's the one little thing. What, what you should do if you get hit. If you get hit... Here, I'm gonna get a little bit of damage. You have an option to sit down and rest. When you rest, you get your HP back. When you're playing on the barb, your recovery health is actually very high, it's 80%. So you're gonna get pretty much around 2 health per tick, and you will get your back all the way until you're done with recovering your um, recoverable health. The recoverable health is the health that you can recover and the rest of the HP that you have left here you can cover up with the healing pots. You won't be able to cover them with bandages because bandages can only recover the specific type of health that you get. Alright, so enough of yapping, let's go and find something useful. We still need to find, we already found the uh, red potion and the white potion. Ideally we get to find um, blue potion as well and basically that would be enough all right so once you come across the little blue thing that is featured on the map there is few things that you can do one you can just simply play around this area two you can go explore further down oops and three make sure that you kill all the mobs before they kill you <laughs> That's something that you need to do. The Your very, very first step should be about surviving the dungeon. Basically, no matter what you do, you gotta make sure that you find this rather earlier than later. Basically, this is one of the statics that are extremely important in your first game. There's one thing that I just realized. One, we have all the boxes that are open here. And which means that someone was already here, which means we're likely to encounter our first PvP and basically that's not what you want to do on your first game pvp is secondary your first your main goal is to actually get out of life get some pots um find some cheese and learn the map a little bit build some ups and um, figure out what to do next once you're done with that focus on doing the task here we have a bar Okay. It was a very close one, but still. While it may seem like it was a close one, it wasn't that close, I'm gonna be honest. Once, because for in order for him to land his second hit, it would take probably another second or so. And that second or so will be just about enough for you to get away or reposition 
The downside though, he hit me directly in the head. And that hit in the head was not healthy. <laughs> so yeah, stay away from it. But basically, this kind of fight is a fight that you're gonna experience when you start out. And um, yeah, so here we go. We got um, better boots. We had better gloves. We don't need quarter stuff. We're gonna get the... We could take that for better sale. And we don't need battle axe. We have a double axe. <laughs> okay, so this guy got a bunch of syllables. And... Um, and why not, you know what I mean? <laughs> We're gonna take all of that. We're gonna take as much as we could physically fit. Early on, when you come across gold, the gold is gonna be more valuable than majority of the items that you're gonna find, so I highly encourage you to take the items that you find because they're gonna be helpful. There is a few things that you can find, and that is throwables. Explosive bottles will do some damage when you throw them, because basically they do exactly um, what it says. Alright, so pretty much we're kind of full. I already shown you one place where you could extract, but how about we go and find a few more areas with those. There's one thing that I usually love to pick up and that's um, the Francesca axes. They're always very helpful and handy and that's definitely something that you would need. Alright, so pretty much no matter where you go, you're gonna come across statics, which are extracts. I would say your most important part... Oh, fuck. We have another guy here. He can block pretty well. Alright, since our main target is actually to find some loot and not just extract, I also want to show you the places where you should go to extract. We had to fight this guy because he was a threat to our life and that's something that we had to do in order to survive. We're gonna take his sellables because sellables early on have more value than majority of the stuff you're gonna come across. The gold is also quite important. The better quality sellables cost a lot more, so, but if the sellables are of a white quality, um, I suggest you take that instead. The guy has a battle axe, and each actually might be better than the double axe I currently have, but um, at the end of the day, I don't think it's really that big of a deal. But the first thing you should do is to equip the stuff that you can actually use instead. Um, so that you will be able to have a replacement of the gear for future. There's one thing that I didn't finish, there's one thing that I wanted to mention and that's uh, how to extract. Basically this place, this elevator would lead you to extract, but um, it's not the only extract and I'm gonna show you another one which is gonna be located right here, very close, which is another static. Currently it's not taken, but uh, if we take it, that would be too easy. So, since um, you are um, What the fuck is this shit? Since as a new player, you want to know all the statics, I'm gonna show as many as it's physically possible. The more statics locations you know, I mean, the more extract locations you know, the better it's gonna be for you. So here we have another tree blue. And um, I want to show you the one very last location where I can probably still make it in time. If you take those portals, well, you'll be able to get out. Looks like someone already took one, but um, 
since I'm trying to kind of reasonably help you. Let's run all the way to another static. All the way, for example, you spawn here and all of the statics somehow are taken. There is always another one that you can always take. All it would take is just come across, go all across the map up until the point you end up there. We have a minus 40 seconds and that's plentiful of time. So basically this is exactly what we're going to do. So you break the door here. That's the beauty of the crush. You can break stuff. You go here to the left. Whether or not you want to kill mobs, it's up to you. But here I'm going to show you how to get it done without killing any mobs. Just unchease your weapon and keep running. Basically, here we have um, three goblins. It's up to you to decide whether or not you want to take them. You have Savage Roar and you could use that. But there's one thing that I want to show you and that is another static. Currently, people struggling to find statics and I'm gonna take you by hand and lead you <laughs> until we get to the point you see all the statics. I don't think I've, I was able to show you one very last static, but it's not that big of a deal. You see that map right there? It means someone took it. And if someone took it, it means the way is taken. We're gonna... And do, what we're gonna do is we're gonna run back to the place where we're at and we're gonna take the portals and stuff. We have 30 seconds and that's more than enough, so we're not really in rush here. You come here, you use Savage Roar, you use Escape Portal and you're good. Even if you don't have HP, it's not that big of a deal. And we are out. It was a pretty good game. Alright, so once you're done with, basically, in our first game, we were able to get to level 5. And basically, with a level 5, you get to choose another perk. There is one perk that I want to mention, which is robust. Basically, Barbarian is not a Barbarian without this perk. This perk gonna give you so much health that you will be at solid 172. Well, I may actually have some stuff which also increase, but anyway, you could actually see the difference. Without robust, I'm at 149. With robust... Um, it's 172. The very first thing that you want to do is um, when you extracted your first game is to sell everything that you were able to find. There is some stuff that you may actually use for the task. For example, this ceremonial daggers, you will need them for a task. The goblin ears, you will also need them for a task. The um, ale, you will need them for a task down the line. So there is a lot of stuff that actually could be useful. For example, here, these are the items that you could use for the task basically from the from the first look that I've noticed. So bandage. You could give it to the surgeon right away. So then we have um what else do we have? We have ale. Oh you would need it for the tavern a little later down the line. You have a bones. Also you would need it for a tavern, I believe. And basically you have daggers. Daggers you would need to pass to the collector. Alright, so I want to conclude. Basically, once you're done, there's a lot of things to explore, there are a lot of things to do, there are a lot of things to learn from. The first thing that you want to focus on is to get to level 20. Once you get to level 20, actually, sorry, my bad, not even to 20, but to level 15. To level, once you hit level 15, you would get access to four perks. My personal favorite is the Crush, Robust, Potion Chugger, and Savage. If I don't have um, armor or axe specialization, if I do, and I run axe. So that's the combat that I personally love. I also love to play with Rage and Savage Roar or Achilles and Savage Roar. These are the build that I usually play with, no matter what weapon I use. So pretty much with this, we could kind of conclude the guide. I feel like I covered the most basic aspects. I think there's one thing that I didn't cover, and that is trade. So, unfortunately, you don't get to trade until you buy a game. Once you buy a game, you gotta wait out for 74 hours. And once you're done with that, basically, you will be able to trade with other people. But it's not that important. You will be able to pretty much get the stuff from the weaponsmith once you progress down the line. You can actually... The um, trader, the merchants are so convenient that once you're done with the task they have to offer you, 
you will be able to buy a full set just like that for the price that would be extremely similar to the one on trade. Anyway, with this we could conclude the guide. We are level 5 barb, 1, 2, 3 tests, new level barb. <laughs> and um, I hope, I really hope I was able to help you out with something. Usually I feel like um, when you're starting out, the biggest issue is to find a way to extract. And I feel like I covered majority of um, places where you can find, you know, extract locations. There should be a couple more, but it's hard to cross the full map to show you every single extract location until... Unless, unless that's basically the focus of the video. But since I try to cover all the topics, I feel like we can conclude the video and we can call it a day. Anyway, it's Demo. I hope you're enjoying the video and I'll see you in the dungeon.